and his son, who owned a small farm in the valley of Slivnaman. They had sheep on the high hills, a cow in the barn, and a flock of chickens in the yard. The mother had died many years before, but the household of two males kept things going very well, and there was never a hard word between them. The father would keep the house and yard tidy and in order, and the young man would roam the mountaintops after the black-faced sheep, as happy as the day was long. And well, though the house could have been a bit tidier, the old man could bake a grand soda bread, and there was always fresh buttermilk from the churn, and the lovely brown eggs on a Sunday morning. Father and son were content. Well, until, that is, the young man set his eye on a fine girl in the next parish. Before you could say Jack Robinson, she was brought back to the valley as his bride. And just in case some of you may be thinking that this fine young woman is going to be making trouble between her menfolk, <laughs> you have another thing coming. Instead, she made their lives all the better. Currant cake on a Sunday, lamb stew on a Thursday, I'm telling you, they made a happy household. And then, to make their joy complete, nine and a half months to the day wasn't a baby born in their midst. But oh, the horror of it. You won't believe what I'm telling you. The child made a terrible difference. The young man suddenly felt the heavy responsibility of fatherhood on his shoulders. And he turned from being a happy-go-lucky young chap into a complaining, disagreeable man. And it was not on his wife or the child that he turned. No, it, it was on his poor old man. Well, you stop your snuffling when you're eating at the table. You think you're at a trough? Stop spitting in the fire. You'll teach the child bad manners. You know you're getting too old for the yard work. You move like a snail. And on and on he would go, whining, complaining, until he would have given you a pain just to listen to him. And all this time, the poor old father said nothing, doing his best, trying to stay out of his son's way, trying to eat less, trying to disappear in the evening, no matter how cold it was, so he wouldn't take up any more room by the fire. Finally, one night, the son ups and says, Father, there's nothing else for you. The house is getting too small for us all. There's food only for us. It's to the poor house you'll go tomorrow. And his wife tried to speak to him, but he thundered, That's final! Well, the next morning he says to Mary, oh, that was the wife's name, Mary, get down that blanket that you brought with you for your dowry and we'll give it to Dad to take with him. And with many a sad glance in the old man's direction, Mary tearfully brought down the lovely woolen blanket that she'd woven with her own hands. Now, in those days, blankets were woven so long that they'd be double on the bed when laid flat. And when himself saw the glory of that blanket, and the fine length of it, he changed his mind. Oh, that's too good a blanket to take with him to the poorhouse. Cut it in half. This time, Mary was ready for him. Oh, do no such thing. I brought this blanket into the marriage. 
and your old man has been kindness itself to me all the days I've been here. You give him the whole blanket and that's final. And the young man, hearing the note of authority in her voice, was about to nod his head in agreement when suddenly, from the, from the cot on the hearthstone, came, there came a small piping voice. Daddy! It was the newborn baby talking. Do no such thing. The half blanket will be fine and enough. But mommy, be sure you put away the other half in a safe place. For I'll need it when I'm sending my daddy to the poor house. <laughs> Do you know, you would have thought a ton of bricks had hit that young man. Here, father, sit by the fire. Make yourself comfy. Mary, put the whole blanket in the top cupboard. Make a cup of tea for us all. And from that day to this, the old man and the wee family live together in peace and contentment. And the word poor house was never again uttered in the valley of Slevenamon.